Hey everyone, and welcome back. This is Diversely Geek and the Diversely Me Foundation, and we are in panel seven. I can't believe Ooh. you're here. This is a <laughs> crazy journey today. My God. So welcome to our seventh panel. Panel. <laughs> that is speaking that to too. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, how here just flip because I, because I just went off. Okay, so this is called The Journey to Embracing My Slash Self. Very important terminology there. I want you to think about why I phrased it. It's um, diversely geek and diversely me. Because every single person on this panel has gone through a different um, self-identification journey. Every one of us. And it's um, some of us, it's because of a, a neurodivergent reason uh, from the brain to the body size, to the body type, to the body image, to the self-expressive self. So our panel today is really about looking at that journey and how, while maybe it's not perfect, right? It's at least how are we starting to get to a place to embrace who we are and then um, recognizing that. And then how have some fandoms helped us? What have we connected to that have helped us along the, along the way? So I am, of course, Nisha Timojan, and I am the mom of everybody these days. <laughs> so um, and, uh, everyone just give a shout out real quick. As, uh, I'm going to start with Miss Lizzie. Hi, I'm Lizzie. Um, I'm a little person. Um, I'm a writer, actor. I do a little bit of everything, a coach. And um, I try to help other little people. Perfect. Thank you so much, all of you. And um, Matthew? Hi, I'm Matthew. Um, I'm a avid cosplayer, as you can see. Um, I'm a professional uh, advertising designer as well as event coordinator, also an LGBT advocate and programmer uh, and director for LGBTHQ.info creating uh, LGBT and diversity content panels and educational fun and events at Comic-Cons. Oh, that's just beautiful. And I'm so blessed to have started to be part of your journey and as, as we work together. So, all right, and that's Miss Raven. Hello, I'm Raven, AKA Dame Red Bento. Uh, I do all kinds of things. I'm actually just now discovering who I really am um, and fandom helped to get me where I'm going. So yay. Uh, but yeah, I do art and I'm gonna be working on streaming. I do podcasts like X's for Podcast or Diversity in Fandom. And yeah, I'm, I'm fat, I'm queer, I'm a woman of color. <laughs> I'm a giant nerd and deal with depression anxiety you name it but i'm still here and it's a lot due to fandom and we welcome you and we embrace you so <laughs> um how about my lovely javier hello everybody my name is javier cruz winnick aka the learning curve i am the creator of the a reason a smile series trying to fill the gaps in pop culture to bring positivity to your face and bring a smile there <laughs> Well, you know, smiles have been a common thing today in discussions. So, woo! <laughs> okay, and of course, my my one and only, one of my adopted daughters, Miss Lovely Astrid Almadovar Perez. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying it right. Uh, <laughs> you're getting used to it. Wow. Um, so I'm Astrid. Um, I'm Puerto Rican and bi. I like a lot of fandoms. Um, and I try to use them in a positive way in my life because I do deal with depression, PTSD, um, borderline personality, and a lot of things um, down the road. But still here trying to make the best of everything. Like today, I dressed up a little bit Peter Pan and I have my bow. So trying to make it be, feel better. <laughs> and you are a person who really engages in body uh, self-expression as part of your journey. We're going to talk about that. And of course, um, Ian? I am Ian Wagner. I'm a clinical mental health counselor over in Pennsylvania. I am a gay male person of color. Um, pronouns he, him, his. And big fandom of many things, but really excited for this panel. This is the one I've been waiting for all day. And you're also <laughs> sharing a lot of your own personal journey for self -expression. Oh, yeah. So Anything. There is no question too big. Be an open, this is an open panel discussion. 
I while I, we already chatted, um, it just gave me a feel of where we wanted to go with it. But you know, we are allowed to also add in questions if we need to. So I want to go ahead and um, we're talking about self-expression and who we are and really being able to learn how to connect to the person that we are versus the one that everyone tells we us to be, right? So let's just put those in two boxes. Yeah, right here and right here. Um, so let's let's go with Matthew. Matthew, um, when did you find your footing to be able to realize that Matthew is this person and not the person Matthew was told to be? <laughs> I know. I asked you the hard one right off the bat. I'm so sure. Oh my God. There's been so many different stages of Matthew, um, all leading to what you currently see before you. Yep. Um, but I think it would definitely have to have been when I came out, um, which was actually a very interesting story. Uh, I went to Pratt Institute in Brooklyn for film animation and on my uh, 21st uh, birthday, the New Year's before, yes, I was in a fraternity, weird, you know, fraternity at an art school, and they were all straight. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but at the New Year's party, everybody was going around saying the resolutions, and I was like, you know what? I want to be completely out by my birthday. Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm gay. Just just flat out, just like that. And it was it was extremely liberating because at the time I was also, uh, I had the lead in La Caja Fa at school. Uh, I was playing the husband, George. Um, and it was just a natural progression for me. I and mean, I had been grown up in theater all my life. It was artsy fartsy, singing all the time and musical theater and dancing and all that stuff and it was just one of those things where like i can't hide this anymore i'm gonna explode and after that everything just started sinking so did you um so i, I have another question but i think i'll hold on to it okay? okay but think about this as i ask each of you the uh, other question so with the sinking moment um and you start to sink with your reality or your authenticity what was that big aha in terms of who I am and what helps me to be that person? So I know I'm going to lead you to the second question, but um, Javier, you want to touch on that first question a little bit? Where, when did you think you were able to find that connect to your true self? Uh, that, that's, I think it's, for me, it's just a really broad situation because my parents, my mother especially, um, she instilled in me at a young age that I was special, that I was, you know, all the things that, that you hear about the, the kids that get the uh, the trophy, you know, even though they don't, they don't, the participation trophy, trophy right? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, ha I had that parent growing up. So that for me did something different than I don't know if other kids had that experience, but I always had it in me that I was like, you know, I was destined for something big. My cousin's asking me if I'm coming into the party. <laughs> um, I always had this in me that I had like something, something was special inside me that needed to get out, that needed to be shared, that needed to be expressed. And my mother always told me, you know, if you have questions, ask. Don't don't stay quiet about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if kids make fun of you, they you know, brush it off. As long as they don't hurt you, as long as they don't hit you, you're good to go. Um, so it was a lot of things that like my mother kind of put in me as a kid. So as I grew up, I was like, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. If I want to do that, I'm going to do that. Um, and when I realized that I wanted to be an artist, I just said, okay, I'm going to do this. And I just, I just put, you know, one foot in front of the other to try to make it work. No matter how many people said I wasn't good or I wasn't as good as this person or that person. Mm -hmm. um, I've always had that. I think, you know, just because of what's in, innate in me and the fact that I had a parent that was always pushing me too to continue to, to excel and to, you know, not accept failure like I, I remember third grade was the first time i had a, a bad report card and i got i got the beat and i never got before <laughs> so um you know it's, it's still that is not commonplace in our society now to have that kind of situation but it also 
showed me there's consequences for your actions. If you don't want, if you don't push forward, you don't have. To, if you push forward, you don't have to deal with these things. Yes. Um, and then when I was a teenager, um, I found out that what what it meant to be Puerto Rican, and what that, how that impacted my world, and how it impacted other people. And I said, okay, I need to know more about this because I didn't learn this at home. I just learned to, you know, be as great as I could be. I didn't know that there was these other factors that were in play, uh, you know, throughout the world that could get in my way, that were that were completely separate from everybody else's struggle. Because simply because I have an ancestry from an island that is not where everyone else is from, so I started to try to learn about that, and that path brought me to where I am now, uh, where I am. Wanting to know more, I still continue to want to know more. I continue to want to uh, put work out into the world to help other people feel what I could, what um, they don't feel that I felt when I was growing up. Like if they didn't have that security from their family, I want to give that to them. If they don't have that self assurance that they're great, I want to give that to them. I want them to feel like they are as great as they can be through my work, through my stories, through my writings, because I want people to feel the way I feel. So you translated like your, your journey into your own work, which is kind of what I know Lizzie did. So um, where did you find that connective self? Because I know you said that being a little person, is you're the only person in your family. You're I'm the only little person yeah. in my family. So talk, talk us through a little bit about how, where those moments of realization came in. And then of course you were like, I'm, but I'm going to have to make the change. <laughs> no one else can do it for me. I honestly think I'm still learning to like find who I am and where I fit in. Being the only little person in my family, I guess everybody just expected me to do what they could do, but they were like five foot and above. And if I couldn't do it, it was, I didn't try hard enough. So I have, I've had siblings pick on me when I went through school, I was shoved in lockers. I was pushed into stuff that was small and then left there. So it's like I, I was at one point I feel uncomfortable in my own person. And so I, I decided, you know what, I've got to make something work for me. And I've got to make myself feel comfortable with me. So I became a writer, um, an advocate for myself. And where I said I've I've had enough of being told what I'm supposed to do. There's just certain things I know I can't do, and the world either has to accept that or they don't. But I can't change who I am, nor am I going to try to fit into what everybody wants me to fit mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I I just started writing, and I'm I'm, I'm learning along my whole journey still. Perfect. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that we have you here. Um, Thank you. And that we can learn so much from you, Lizzie. It's 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 a grace. So um, how about you, Ashton? I know I know your story, obviously, but it's still your story. So I want you to share. It would be great. <laughs> um, what exactly? Um, <laughs> um, you always tell me about that connective moment that while it hasn't been perfect, you've realized things at a certain age that that who you are is different than who you thought you were? It's been, cause like I have so many labels, um, like so many things that can be applied to me. So there's been like so many times that are like, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, I have this or I have that. Um, so there's like a lot of moments, some of them I don't remember. I just felt like it was always that way. It was just, there wasn't a label to put to it. I'm like, I just thought it was normal. Like me being by, I just thought that was normal until one day somebody men mentioned the word. And I'm like, oh, so that's what it is. Um, so it's been a lot of moments in a lot of things that I identify with um, that I had that. So I don't know. <laughs> it's still a work in progress because I I feel like I'm still growing and discovering um, things about myself and being comfortable in my skin um, and be able to create my own family that accepts all of that. Uh, like I know my my original family that I grew up with, they love me and everything, but there's some parts that they're like, mm, we're just not going to talk about it. And it's just like that big 
skeleton in the room that nobody mentions and we just move on from there. So I'm just working in creating my own family to be able to be every single side of me at once without having to hide it. But it's a burden, right? And yeah. it puts some pressure on you. Does everyone kind of feel the same that when you're trying to live up to the expectations of what everyone else thinks you're supposed to be, that that yeah. adds burden oh, yeah. to your journey? Yes. Yeah. I've actually let that go a while ago. Mm -hmm. Like I just don't let anyone's expectations be put on me. I figure those are your expectations, not mine. I try to live up to mine, but I'm a lot easier with myself. It's not really an expectation as much as a goal. So like, hopefully I hit this, but if I don't, it's okay. At least I know I tried my hardest. I unfortunately did not have a lot of choice in whether or not I wanted to live up to somebody else's expectations. It was imperative that I live up to those expectations for my own survival. So yeah, for a lot of that, it was just running after somebody's expectation that could literally never be met and never be done well enough while I was fighting to still express and be who I was. So, yeah. And I think that that's a true authentic and organic journey. So many lived living beings on the entire, at, at, at a global perspective are struggling with that very exact dynamic every single moment, actually. I mean, you see, look at the billions of people in this world. The fact is, is people don't get the chance to represent who they truly are. They just don't. Um, someone's constantly impressing on them who to be. Um, so I'm going to jump into the next question, which was, so then what deterrence to expressing your identity have you been able to address and work through with the help of your fandom, your fandom passion or a healing hobby, for instance? For me, I'll, I'll start if that's okay. Um, I've, I've, I created, I call my alter ego, the shrew. I created my own superhero comic character. It's who I guess others want me to be, but I made it where it fits me. It's right for me. This is what I know my character has strength in what she does. And she can be just as strong, just as, as wonderful as any taller superhero. She's just more compact, but she can do everything the world says she can't. So that's that's what I did for me, and it's a it's a it's a it helps me. It's a healing hobby. Yeah. And I know people are, are really like the shrew, the story, yes. and and it's doing well actually because you've gotten recognition for it. Yes, I have, mm -hmm. which was surprising. I didn't know that it would do so well, but. I think a lot of people are impressed that even how my character is, it's like no one notices the height difference. It's wow, she's just as powerful as Wonder Woman or Supergirl or whoever. But it everybody it forgets that, oh, she's short and she's doing this. So I think that's what I, I'm giving, you know, just because I'm short or some, you know, they still can be as just as powerful. It's the height that's a different. There's nothing wrong mentally with the person. Right. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, how do you feel uh, in terms of the the Mike um, Matthew, the deterrence? Right. So we talked about that when we did the the panel discussion. Um, what do you think has helped you to be able to express your identity and work through it in terms of a fandom? Well, I personally suffer from a bit of body dysmorphia and weird. <laughs> I actually, I do have a bit of uh, social anxiety, which is odd considering that I'm involved in all of these things and everything. So you would think I'm an extrovert with how personable I am in the company, but I'm also extremely okay with being by myself. And I found that. Uh, my fandoms of cosplay and comic books, mm -hmm. theater, and performance and costumes uh, helped me to step out of myself. I don't know if that makes sense to a lot of people. Where, you, where you find this sort of inner strength of, of sorts mm -hmm. when you're not yourself, but you are yourself. You're like an empowered self mm -hmm. because. You've, you've left that part of yourself that's 
bogged down by social constraints mm -hmm. and limitations because you're playing this character that you feel so engrossed and so connected to that it just it's not that it makes you a better you but it helps you to i found that it helps me to bring out my more authentic self without the worries and the hassle and the chip on your shoulder and the weight that just feels like it's stifling you all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's, it's freeing. It's freeing. I think that, um, Ashton, you introduced me to something that I would have never done without you. <laughs> you want to talk about what we shared together? What, Dapper Day? Dapper Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thing. I love dressing up. Um, I started dressing up because I got into I got tired of feeling super depressed and bad about myself every time I saw myself in the mirror. And then I found this um, moth club group on Facebook and they were like all about dresses. They ended up meeting with a group of friends, like hiding from my ex and whatever. And I ended up making this group of friends that introduced me to the upper day and that just opened my mind. I'm like, I want to be that confident. I want to be able to just be loud. And that's exactly what I do. I be loud and with my dresses, even if I'm just going to Publix, I have like a full on dress and I have my flower or my bows and I start making bows. So it just opened a lot of doors for me of being creative. And I'm like, I like feeling this way. So it has been, I think like four years since that happened. And it has helped me with my anxiety, meeting people that accept me and embrace who I feel like instead of judging me. It's like, why are you dressing this way? Why are you acting this way? And like, I really enjoy it. So they, um, they, how you say that? Um, Empowered you? <laughs> yes, they, um, they support me on doing it instead of closing the door and like, don't be that way, be normal. And mm -hmm. that's how I made a lot of my new friends, including Dan, including Nisha, I just, started talking to people and when my mom came back um after i started that change she's like who are you you're not my daughter my daughter is shy she doesn't talk to random people in the parks and i'm like i just started talking to people and be confident so they started to compliment me in my dress and i start having a full conversation know about their life and then we go our own separate ways or change social media and we become friends one of my good friends right now is in chicago they flew me over there and everything because we became super close thanks to that day. And it's been like three years now that we've been best friends and we talk every day. She helps me, I help her. And every time she comes down here, we connect, we see something on social media and we're like, hey, this looks like you. And I love that connection that that day brought me. And yeah. still to this day, a lot of people um, sometimes say it, but I'm like, it brings me happiness and I try to share it with other people too. So, because it brings me so much joy. And I tell Nisha all the time, like, are you going to dress up? Are you, we're going to meet up. We yes. got to take pictures. <laughs> and I studied photography and I was the person, oh, I'm always behind the camera. And then that birthday happened and I'm like, can you take my picture? And you, <laughs> so it was a complete change for me she, because it really she, helped me. Yeah. She had to walk me through my first day the discomfort I felt in every ounce of me from my, the top of my head to my toes. Um, and I'm sharing it with everybody, to be honest with you about it. She, We shared that journey together now the last three years and um, I'm very different because of it. I, I consider my dap, Dapper Day experimentation, you know, journey a healing hobby for me, which you learned about in the last panel, I 100%, because I could feel that genetic restructuring, you know. Um, Dang, thank you and so much uh, for joining us. And I know you had some tech issues, so can you hear us okay? I can hear you just fine. I'm sorry about that. Literally, I've been oh. testing out the Wi-Fi all day. And yeah, then right as good. we go live, everything so drops. Per perfect. Oh, hey, okay. it happened to another panelist too, so don't worry about it. Um, this is a perfect discussion point for you because you and I, and Asher, we've shared this journey. Um, over the last how many years about being able to take those deterrents now remember the deterrents can't it may be ones that are within you but on an average i want everyone to understand 
You don't create those in yourself. They created because of learned behavior. People created that environment and that self perspective. And when we engage in fandoms and healing hobbies, we're paring away at it. We're, we're get what we're like, go away. No, that's not me. So what deterrence um, to expressing your identity have you been able to address think and work through because of your fandoms? Um, well, I guess like my, as far as like self identity is when I hit 24, I went through my first bout with cancer and went through chemo where I gained, I ended up gaining a lot of weight and I kind of lost myself for a while because I was now, every time I looked in the mirror, I was in a body that I did not recognize. And to a big degree, I didn't like it because I was, I didn't know who I was anymore. You know, like I didn't, my clothes didn't fit me anymore. I went up like two sizes and I, as, as you know, as well, like I'm a social butterfly and that never really stopped, but it became a lot more shy, a lot more put in a trunk and put away because I was all of a sudden I was really afraid of what judgment was and I didn't really come back out until actually I moved to Orlando and I saw that there were so many people that were all shapes and sizes were from all walks of life but they like the nerd flag was flying with such yep. pride and such like strength yeah. that it took me a little bit, but I'm like, it's okay to look like I do and still say that I'm part of this or that I like this and that I'm not too old that I'm not too fat. And then really I opened up when I started cosplaying because I was able to escape but even while escaping doing different characters i i chose characters that i identified with not just in size but personality as well mm -hmm. you know they were mm -hmm. like outgoing they were you know like it made people smile and the more i made people smile the more sure of myself i became the more happy i got i was like Oh my god like what i'm doing that i feel comfortable with is making these people if even for a short second or for for a minute or where we have a short conversation it's putting them in a happy place so okay let's keep going with this and it started with jacob kowalski from fantastic beasts and then i just did other characters and then when what i call bro thor or fat thor came on screen watching avengers I was like, oh, that is so my next cosplay. And I hit the ground running with it and people absolutely love it. And it's the only thing that I do without a shirt on. Anything else that I do in my life, I have to wear a shirt. I'm still very self-conscious about it. But when I do Thor and I walk around topless and people are like high-fiving me and saying it's be beautiful and it's wonderful, man, do I feel good about it. And I hope that I can find more characters like that because it. I can also show people that like, hey, you're like me. You don't feel good in your body, but look, I'm doing this and it's fun, and and I like it. And and that's what made me like even a stronger person inside. And I'll just keep doing it because as long as it brings people joy and happiness, and it make it makes me feel good, and. It builds a stronger me on the inside. So, yeah. So, um, thank you so much. I love that story, and I'm so happy that I've always I've been able to be able to witness those journeys with you, my friend. Um, I'm going to ask a really interesting question. So, have um, have you ever discovered a fandom? So, I'm I'm going to tap in here with Raven and then come back mm -hmm. over. Um, have you ever discovered, uh, to Ian, sorry, a fandom that helped you step out of your box and to find your own true self? For me? Oh, where do you even begin? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and choose one. Maybe. I know, right? <laughs> so I'm a gamer nerd from way, way 
way back when. We're talking NES, Atari, the originals. Um, and I've been gaming since I was five. And it's so nice to be able to like find roles in video games, especially like, online video games, which my friends introduced me to about 10 years ago. Um, and like I got started with World of Warcraft. That was my big thing. I was a hardcore guild member. Yeah. I was in the, one of the top guild servers. We just were absolutely epic. Um, and I found that I really liked being the druid because I could just go and be myself out in the wilds, picking yeah. flowers and doing things there. But it, it became a way to kind of express who I was by the character I embodied. And being able to do online gaming meant that I could talk to people and they could get to know my personality and see if they liked that first. And then eventually they would see the rest of me and they go, Okay, yeah, no, that no, that fits. That fits. <laughs> it's it's easier for me to get to know people talking to them rather than on site because on site I feel, especially in the gaming community, they see just woman first, and apparently I'm terrifying because I have a really hard resting bitch face. <laughs> but yeah, they're like, oh, that girl is so mad. No, just stay away from her. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I was just looking at something. What's going on? <laughs> so when people get to talk to me while I'm gaming or while I'm like nerding out over like Overwatch, and oh my God, did you see this new legendary epic skin? People get to know the real me versus the resting bitch face. There's a lot of people here. I'm at armpit level. This is not good. Me just freaking out yeah. and blazing over. So yeah. So um, Ian, same. Um yeah. I'm sorry. That was a thank you for sharing. That was fantastic. I love that so much. I'm so sorry. I'm pushing you guys along because we have we are doing Hi. so good, guys. Oh my god. Okay, go go go, Ian, and then I'll uh, get back to Dank real quick. Like majority of my things, it was Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter was the first fandom I like kind of like dedicated myself to. Like I let myself be a part of the fandom instead mm -hmm. of just something I enjoyed. It was something I like actually participated in. And in doing so and in going to conventions, it helped me discover who I am. It was like, oh, so I'm discovering new things about myself. And that was exciting because I did it not only with the Harry Potter series, but with the Harry Potter series and my friends that I made through the Harry Potter series. Like I learned who I am through the help of friends like you, Nisha, like Allison, Lauren, like you guys helped me discover Ian, which was amazing. Aww. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Um, and so with, um, I'm gonna have um, Javier and um, Dank and Lizzie tap into this one. Um, so how has engaging in a supportive fandom helped and guided you to self-identify? You know, so a little bit different, not when you got there, right? How has it um, helped you to self-identify and then begin to self-express yourself? Not, the, not yourself as the body, right? Yourself. So uh, Lizzie, you want to do that and then Dank? Sure. Um... I think by, um, I guess I've had to learn more about myself as, as I'm still doing, I'm still learning about who am I really and who do I want to be and where do I want to be years from now. Um, so part of me is still trying to identify the person or I eventually want to become to better myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm at this, I guess it's a weird stage where trying to figure out me. Oh, love it. Yes. Absolutely love it. Um, how about you, Dank? Um, I've come to pretty much think that, or pretty much accept the fact that I am here to make people laugh, to make people happy. And that whether it's through my humor, whether it's through my cosplays, whether it's through just stories of my life, I I love, well, it's not, I, I love it, but like when people are like feeling down and they come to me and I can leave them with a smile because I was able to uplift them 
that's why people come to me because they know that I will listen to them, truly listen to them, and then try to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And that's who I am. That's the friendships that I've built. That's the strong bonds that I've made is through simple jokes, simple laughter, and just mm -hmm. memorable moments. And that's great because like, like you, like Angela, just random people that I met at random occasions, which now I've become extremely good friends with just by pure fate and by having that one moment that stayed and just blossomed. Yeah. And that's how yeah. I go about my life and go about making friends. That's just unbelievable. It is literally the living proof. This panel, as much as I wanted to flesh it out more, is a living proof of concept that we can actively redirect and retrain our the entire neuro, neuros, neuro, neurological yep. system, and then in turn, our entire immune system by engaging in positive self-activity, the healing hobbies and fandoms. Yes, the entire immune system can be redirected. Ashford is, with a lot of love, will heal through something. I will heal through something when I'll be like, I need hugs, come here, let's go watch this together. And then <laughs> that thing creates that support system. I know. Um, how about you, Javier? So for me, um, I've always had, I always felt like the outsider looking in uh, being an illustrator, being into comics, being into cartoons and such, you know, how we've always been told that stuff's for kids or why do you watch that? Why are you into those things? So, uh, you know, I just, again, with what my mother instilled in me, I always just kept my head up and I was like, you know, they're crazy. I'm going to enjoy what I enjoy. Um, it made me sad and it made me feel alone a lot of the times, but I still had to persevere because that's how I felt. I, I liked those things. I just, I just kept forward. And when I finally found Deviant Art, I finally realized how many people out there were like me that were going through the same situation, who were going through, you know, talking about how they've been made fun of, how they, they, were, they felt alone, um, and putting out there what they enjoy. You know, I got to see so much artwork that I had never thought was out there. Um, and then from Deviant Art, you know, of course, you've got MySpace and then Facebook and then Instagram and Twitter. All those things were wonderful things too, but then going from uh, the online scene to then being able to go to the con the conventions and going through the advent of the conventions. So I started conventions back in 2008 at the Big Apple Con, and you know conventions were hard to find at that time. Mm -hmm. um, Wizard Wizard was finally um, being the the big showrunner. They had Philly and they had Chicago. Um, I went to them back in 2002. But by like 2008, they still haven't gotten to the city yet. So we had to find like little, you know, side shows and uh, church basements and stuff like that. Um, but I started getting a little bit of an understanding that there's more people out there and more, more to experience. And then I started traveling to Chicago, started traveling to Philly. Um, and my art is what helped me be able to connect with people because if I wasn't an artist and I was just a fan and just looking at the stuff as a fan, I might not have put the energy forward to, to go on these journeys. But yes. in trying to live as an artist, I said, okay, this is the, the only path that I'm seeing because I'm not getting hired by, you know, uh, JP Morgan. I'm not getting hired by these guys or those guys. Yeah. Um, so I guess if I, if I can do this through the convention scene, then I'm going to do that. And then I started to grow as an artist. I started making more money at the shows. I started meeting people and seeing cosplayers. I didn't know what cosplay was before that. But going to the conventions, I started seeing cosplayers and seeing mm -hmm. the creativity of the cosplay community. And, you know, that was another connection that I never would have thought to make or that I would ever be a part of. And now I know people who cosplay. I have friends that are cosplayers. Um, I've designed yeah, some here. cosplay. Co you yeah. have a bunch right here, my friend. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So it's like, you know, being able to find community um, when you're told that you're not part of the community. It's like, yeah. you know, it's validation to say, you know what? I don't care what you guys are saying over there. I got these people over here. I'm going to go listen to them. Yeah. Y'all can talk your garbage over there, but these people over here are talking positivity. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> and I'll leave y'all to, to do what you want to do over there, and I'm going to come over here and do what these guys are doing. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's, where, it. that's, that's where I was it. able to, to live and flourish and you know, and I'm meeting you guys and 
you know, making new friends. You know, I, I've already, I sent Lindsay a friend request. I sent some more people some friend requests. You know, we're going we're gonna to build and we're going to keep growing. And that's because of what you're doing, what the convention scene is doing. It's allowing people to be their true, authentic selves. And, and, and to I appreciate be able you for to, it. To change the net. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you. It's about us being able to, to take hold of and um, in the redefinition and create the narratives of self, even in the convention scene. So I want us to always that's remember right. that's the goal of our coalition and why we're yep. launching it. We're going to close yep. out. Uh, we have to, two minutes left to three minutes tops with Matthew and Ian. And I'm going to ask you a little darkness. Um, how has your love of fandom helped to push you through some of the darker times in life? And I do ask you, because just like myself, you've also gone through medical things uh, that have that have been challenging so um if you care sharing that would be great <laughs> um I'll, I'll i'll kick it off um the past two years have been super hard yeah everybody's been going through covid uh but i had a little extra added on to that uh in fall of november 2019 i suffered a traumatic brain injury by falling in the new york city subway uh, literally one of those cartoon visuals where the, your ankle rolls and your feet fly over your head and you land smack on your back with the whole like puff of smoke behind you. Um, that was pretty much what happened to me. Uh, and my brain sort of hit my skull and it was super fun. Um, but because of that injury, my body is not responding to my brain properly. So everything works fine my muscles are great my eyeballs are perfectly healthy but all the connections and signals where your brain tells your body to do one thing or your body is doing something and tells your brain there is either a disconnect it's broken it's warped something weird is happening and it's not something that any doctors can do anything about except for time and it sucks because you're you feel like you're trapped in a body that you don't know because it's not responding to what you want it to okay. Um, getting through that with COVID and not being able to go to cons, which was my social outlet, was depressing AF. Uh, literally couch trapping me on the weekends daily to, you know, that part where you're like in the corner of your couch, you can't move and you're just like, woe is me, where's my pint of chocolate and all that stuff. Um, but I broke through it by starting to do cosplay projects. Um, I started to design new things and I bought myself a cricket and started realizing that, you know, I don't have to be like this. And I started going positive and I started making COVID masks to sell for geeks. And then when that started to run, I'm starting to make uh, gamer bags and things like that. So like I took that fabric and I made something else. And it's just, it's oh. very, my God, you literally took that fabric and made it something else. I mean, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, I can show you guys on my uh, Etsy page for Merch by Matthew. Um, so let's share that to the website for absolute sure. I really want to delve okay. more. I'm so sorry. We are actually at close time, ready to go to the last panel. I'll, uh, I'll give Ian the 30-second uh, outro. Oh, great. <laughs> well, I know we're closing out. Um, I, too, was in the hospital recently, very recently, Nisha knows. Um, I basically, long story short, my insides are jumbled together and tied together. It's very weird. So, I know. it's It was hard. I was in the hospital for, what, Nisha, three weeks. Had right. to have a major surgery, yeah. non-laparoscopic. We're talking about the full open up. So, it was scary. And the thing that got me through it was, honestly my friends which a lot of them came from fandom like Isha and i would facetime you know she would see me gown and all and but yep. having that communication <laughs> and community really made all the difference all the difference in the world so and i got that through fandom thank you so much i i i, I have that through fandom <laughs> for all of my healing as well and the journey that i'm going through with my family as well so I love all of you guys. I know Matthew has to bounce. <laughs> He's got to get on to the next panel. Um, thank Bye, you everyone. so much. Bye. And Dank, we shared your tw um, your social media a little bit earlier so everyone would be able to see it. I really appreciate you. And we're going to do this again thank soon. You. Have a great yeah. day. Bye, everyone. Bye now. Bye. Have a great one.
Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.